mic. I like to mess around with music. I found out something about the guitar when I when I went to uh, to do this project. I found out that this was a uh, is a six model six forty five uh, Ibanez, um, and that is a Concord series from about nineteen seventy seven. And it was a part of a lawsuit between Martin Guitars and Ibanez um, that uh, they were saying this they were trying to make this into a, a D twenty eight that they were it was a too close of a clone to a D twenty eight, and it does have the look of a D28 uh, on the outside. It, um, it has kind of the feel. It's a, it's a, it's a reasonably lightweight and, uh, and, and, and the woods are, are very nice, uh, Indian rose wood and so forth. It, it's a you know, mahogany frets board. It, it's, it's a nice guitar, but it, it's no D28 and it does sound like a D28. And you know, I, as, as poorly as I play, which I'm gonna give you a terrible example of just to, to listen to this guitar, um, uh, it's worth having a guitar that can do more, that can, that, can, that can sound better. And so I'll be installing this high vibe system. Um, and the high vibe system, you can learn all about that online, but it's a high vibe system one. Um, and it, it, it provides um, a real um, enhancement to the guitar in, in turning it from a purely acoustic guitar into an acoustic electric that can stand alone without an amplifier and has quite a few um, uh, effect features that can be run all off of a panel which will be mounted here. Uh, the uh, High Vibe uh, kit, um, it's a nicely packed box I'll say. Um, it comes with a quick start guide. Um, interestingly, the quick start guide is uh, really to do with when you buy the fully uh, assembled guitars. Uh, it basically tells you to uh, plug it in and get started right away. Well, we have a little, we have a few things to do before we can get started here today. Um, first, let's take a look at the um, at the actuators. These actuators are um, are what is going to put the sound into the guitar. It's uh, going to come out of this amplifier box. It's also a control box with all sorts of effects and so forth. It ties together with your uh, with your phone, so you can control it from the phone as well. Uh, comes with this foam pad. I'm not quite sure how we're going to use utilize that. Um, it has um, the jacks for the back of the guitar, an input and an output that will mount here, back here. Um, the charger, which will um, charge in, in this uh, USB port right here, USB C. Um, comes with some templates, uh, the piezo strip that will go in the, into the saddle that we talked about earlier, um, and a, a charging cord, um, some cute little labels, and um, these um, that will go to the side, inside the guitar to hold the, the uh, cables alongside so that they're not rattling around inside the guitar. So that's it, there isn't a whole lot to it. Um, Putting it together is going to be a challenge. It says uh, when you when you buy the kit that you need to uh, uh, get the uh, help of a professional guitar uh, installer, um, but I'm too cheap to do that. So you get to have the fun of watching me destroy my guitar or turn it into a, a really amazing new uh, new creature. So let's get started with that. Although there are no instructions, uh, written instructions on doing this installation included in the box. It's readily available online, and you can watch YouTube videos of people who do a very professional job of installing it. I hope you'll re refer to some of those and, and not do everything the way I'm doing it, because I like to break the rules right away. One of the first things they say is that you want to install the actuators with the super glue. People tell me, I've had, have seen that this Loctite um, gel control super glue is the glue that is preferred to be used, so I got some of that at the Home Depot. Um, they tell you to use um, uh, new uh, drill bits and uh, and so forth. And I went to Home Depot to get those. They call for three centimeter, a uh, three millimeter, uh, and a ten millimeter drill bit. Um, try and find that at Home Depot. What I ended up with was a one eighth inch, uh, which is three point two millimeters, and a um, three eighths inch, which is nine point five uh, millimeters. So. Close enough, I believe, for, for what we're doing here. Now, mounting these inside the guitar first, running the wire out to the control box, 
and making sure that the the piez that the um, that the actuators work inside the guitar and that there's no buzzing or hissing or and, and that the system is actually functioning properly um, is an initial test they want you to do before you start drilling into the guitar and cutting holes in it and all which makes perfect sense however the actuators go right here and the the hole you drill for the uh, piezo strip goes right here in the on on the saddle worries me that it's all so close so i'm going to drill the hole for the piezo strip first. Now that hole, and I've got a picture I'll, I'll pop up from my phone uh, to show you what that looks like. It's, it's in the edge of the saddle and the piezo strip is gonna pop through. Um, isn't that special? that just points, pulls right through. Nobody mentions anything about it being hard to do, which is why I love YouTube videos. So I'm pushing my drill bit down through so that I find the hole easily. And I'm putting the, the tip of this right on the edge of the, of the drill bit, following it up into the hole and pushing through. That's the way to do it. And then it lays down in the saddle and then the saddle is just going to go on top of it. And I tell you this is the part that really concerned me. There we go. The saddle is sitting on top of that thing. just wants to fall off. It does have lateral enough, it's enough bite in there that it can stay, but it's not staying in there without the, without the strings on it, that's for sure. You can see that, it pops, pops right off, sitting on top of that piezo. So that was my concern. Um, I hopefully caught enough that I can edit that and show you all, um, you know, what I went through to get that in there, but, but that was my concern. Um, I'm gonna take that out now. Now that I have a, a clear way to do it and put it back in again. And now I'm going to um, look at mounting these actuators inside there. Now a friend of mine recommended, because he's used this uh, super glue gel control before, he's, uh, the instructions say 10 seconds, hold it 10 seconds in place. Uh, doesn't say anything about turning the guitar upside down. He, he, his recommendation to me was turn the guitar upside down so that you're placing these down. Hold them for at least a minute in place for each one. Um, you need the wires to be going in the direction of where the, the control unit's gonna go. Control unit's going over here on this side. So that's the direction that you want these facing. So this would be the... Um, on the top side of the guitar and this one will be on the bottom side of the guitar and we need to find a place for these that they're going to fit and I'll show you some pictures from inside this guitar I said earlier it's like a d28 it looks like a d28 on the outside but you can see the framing is nothing like a d28 on the inside and uh, it's it's a bit of a challenge on how we're going to put this uh, you know how we mount these in and uh, they're a little bigger than I would imagining so I'm, I'm thinking that they might not fit where I had hoped and I'll reach in here and see if I can feel around to where I was hoping they would go. I was hoping they would go like that. And I was hoping that this one. Blue. Let's take a look 
a little closer here. The glue is going to go right on this inner lip here. You can see when you look at the, the actuator, it's like a speaker, and uh, and this is uh, the the ridge that's going against the uh, the soundboard, basically, which is what's going to make the sound. So I'm going to flip the guitar upside down. Doing this, well, I'll, I'll start like this, and then I'll flip it up. very careful not to get this on anything but the ring. Get it all the way around. I want this to be a good, good firm seal. I'm holding on to it for a minute. I won't make you sit through it. <laughs> I'll use the edit feature. Um, okay, so at this point, I have connected the high vibe unit, uh, put it on speaker, turned the speaker on, uh, connected it um, to my phone, and um, the Miola Friday night in San Francisco, the short tail of the Blackwoods. My guitar now plays much better than I do. That proves that the system is working and we're on to the next step. I think there's some benefit to having screwed many things up in my life. It makes me extra careful and uh, I can sometimes see something coming before it bites me. Um, I'm going to show you a close-up of this. This template is not what you would think. If you look at those dashed lines, you might think, okay, that's the lines of the bottom of this unit that's going to drop into the guitar. And if I cut a line on those lines, then that should fit this unit there. Uh, I'm going to show you a close-up picture. I'm going to take a picture with my camera show you that that's not the case. Take the picture of the camera. You can see from the picture I'm taking, the lines themselves do not fit. And I've determined what this really is by watching some of the other people do their videos. What we really do is we drill a hole at each of these intersections with the 10 millimeter drill, which is a, a 3 8 drill, which is 9.5, but that still will be close enough. So we drill the hole there, which the, the, the outside diameter of the hole will be bigger. And then we scribe a line between the uh, the outside radius of that of those holes, and that will be bigger than the space that's shown here on the uh, the dotted line, uh, and will be inside of the outer line. The outer line being the 
really where you want the really where you want the uh, the cut to be. So, wish me luck. We're gonna give that a try. Um, I, I'm gonna start off by putting a uh, a piece of uh, painter's tape right in the area where we're gonna be doing this to help uh, prevent any splintering of the wood. Um, I've got a, um, a a cheap Dremel knockoff, but with a, a good um, blade on it, um, which is where we'll do that cutting. We're gonna start by doing the cut of the, um, the uh, 10 millimeter, which is really 9.5 millimeters, um, these brand new drill bit. Um, based on this template. So give me a moment to set that up. I've done my best to uh, position this so that it's in the center and uh, evenly spaced. Of course the guitar gets wider as you go down so you have, to have a uh, I have just over uh, just under an inch uh, about an inch and a sixteenth um, to the line on each side and I've got about a, just under an inch and a quarter on this uh, second half. So I've got it balanced out very nicely. I've checked inside the guitar to make sure that I'm not cutting into any frames where this is, and making sure that this is a clean, clean spot to cut. I've got my uh, 3 8 inch uh, drill ready to go. I'm gonna center that drill right on the, the spot that they've given me. And still I'm scared as hell. <laughs> but here I go. Okay, one down, three more to go. cut that uh, I'm going to need to make. Show the picture of it. Say that's not a perfect hole is a real understatement. Oh my. I guess it's always good not to be too big. I think I can see where the problem is here. I will do a little sanding and uh, and get this uh, quite quite perfect. If I'm lucky, I think I think we might be there. So as you probably noticed about guitars, there are very few very flat things on a good guitar. <clears throat> Everything's got a got a curve to it. Um, in this case, you know, there's a bit of a curve up that's happening here, and uh, so you end up with a, a lift. And this is this is the reason for the foam. Um, I can see the reason for the foam. The foam will fill that gap, and there won't be a gap between the two. And um, I'm favoring that idea now. Well, look at how it fits in. Why am I 
myself up. Do this as well as I can. Wow, that cut faster than I thought it would. Okay, well, there's a hole in it. This is the uh, component that goes in that. And before I install this, um, I'm going to pop out the uh, the uh, system unit, and I'm going to get a vacuum cleaner, and I'm going to make sure I get everything, all the all the uh, particulate out of the guitar. Um, take a picture of that. Well, I can show you on here. So job done, the uh, High Vibe System 1 has been uh, installed, uh, tested, it's, uh, it's working. Uh, now with the unit turned off completely, I'm going to play... Uh... I'm afraid I'd be neglectful if I didn't show you the uh, difference between the way it sounded just on acoustic, which is about the same. It didn't change very much, even though we have a little problem with the saddle. Um, but I thought I'd turn it on and give you just a little feel for the kind of sound difference that's coming out of this guitar, because it's pretty significant. I'm going to move to the effects window, and I'm going to start off with it off, and just play a few just simple chords. <laughs> Really like vintage. I feel like that. Try this reverb. Listen to that reverb. I'm a better guitar player already. <laughs> I just wanted to insert this and uh, then we'll wrap up on the next one. I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to be picking at it. I'm going to play it. And uh, who knows, I might become better at playing if I play enough. So thanks very much. Uh, again, I'm Mike who messes with music and uh, look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. <laughs>